Tony Tone Show on Vintage Sound 93.1 FM. I don't know what you're doing on November 19th. It's a Saturday. But what you should do immediately is get tickets for stand-up comedian Ron White. You might call him Tater Salad. He's back at the Paramount Theater in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We have some free tickets to give away. And ladies and gentlemen, on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline, I think this should be Ron White. He was supposed to call me, which is pretty cool. So let me grab this right here. Hello, Ron? Tony Tom? Is this Ron White? It is. Tater Salad himself is back on the radio in Iowa. What's up, buddy? Oh, man. I'm uh, just kind of getting uh, getting my feet back on the ground. I've been on vacation. I was going to say, so when I reached out to line this up, they said, uh, we'll get back to you in two weeks. Ron's taking some time off. And I was concerned because I didn't think you ever took time off. So I'm happy for you, man. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, and it, it was kind of weird because, well, kind of weird. <laughs> We'd been building this built this house, it took four years, and uh, while we were gone in Mexico, we just moved in in April, while we were in Mexico, a pipe broke and completely destroyed the entire house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a great thing to come home to. <laughs> oh, all the no. floors buckled, and, uh, well, it's all, it had to be taken down to the studs. Oh, man, I'm sorry that that oh, happened. Wow. So... Now we're, I mean, it's not like, you know, I don't have insurance and things to do in another half. Yeah, I'm right. fine, but <laughs> it was still a drag. Yeah, it's still a pain in the butt. So do you do you find yourself, like, Ron, is that something, because November 19th you're going to be in Cedar Rapids at the Paramount Theater. People are just losing their mind excited for this show. Is uh, a terrible situation like that, the stress with the house, is that something that you work into the material? Because you're a very honest guy, so I wonder – if there's a way to make that funny, or is that something that won't get addressed? It ain't funny yet. <laughs> you might have to give this one a couple of weeks. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, that's where it comes from. That's yeah. right. It, it, my comedy comes from tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be a little too soon, though, is what you're saying. I find it fat. <laughs> This one's still a little stingy. Right. It's a little... Uh, this, this happened Wednesday. Oh, no. Yeah, last Wednesday. That's when this happened. Oh, man. Yeah, you might want to give that one a, a break. It is interesting that when you come to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Paramount Theater, November 19th, by then we'll have a new president. And that's a weird thing to say. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to be here and the country will have voted one way or the other. I don't know what's going to happen. Do you have any any hinkling of what you think uh, what you think is going to happen on election day? Yeah, I mean it looks like Hillary's going to win. I mean it, it's uh I don't know if uh, Trump seems to shoot himself in the foot <laughs> uh every 15 minutes and uh and, and I know people that are huge fans of both candidates and and uh and, and I know that that my friends that are big huge Trump fans are really getting pretty disgusted with just you know, just, just how bad he is at running for office. <laughs> I wonder if that, you know, is that, is that something that it's on 24-7? So, like, personally, with the radio show, I haven't talked about politics that much. I, I, I chatted with Tommy Chong the other day, and he kind of hit on it a little bit. It was part of their act. But when when you're on the road, is it do you just leave it alone because people get enough of it already? It seems like when they come to a comedy show – like yours, maybe they just want to unplug from all that crap. Yeah, you know, I I, I talk about it very briefly. I I, I, I do a bit about uh, about the wall and how it makes more sense to build a net between here and Canada to keep the geese out. <laughs> and, uh, yes, which it does. And uh, I talk about El Chapo's tunnel and and how useless it makes the wall. And it, it's a, it's really a bit about geese. Really I love that. Politics. Yeah, no, that's. I, I hate geese, and I like to talk about. It. <laughs> it's totally perfect. Um, I had a couple friends of mine that I think are going to partake in the VIP experience when you're in Cedar Rapids. Talk about that for a second. It's a unique opportunity for folks to get to meet you, but it seems like it's more than just your standard meet and greet, right? You know, I don't. I don't really know what other people do uh, in my meet and greet. Uh, you know, you can, uh, it's just, a, it's more, it's really personable. I, I don't let it get past 65 people. Uh, I'll answer questions until nobody has a question, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, sometimes that's a long time, sometimes it's not. Sure. Uh, that just, it's really kind of weird that it's, you'd think if you took 65 people, and they at random, they'd always add up to about the same thing, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and uh, get a picture with me, and then we have merch and the sign lanyard and, 
that I do actually sign, and uh, uh, and I and I really I really don't know what else. <laughs> yet, but uh, but it's not a rush thing, and it's uh, you know because my guys are my guys are settling the show and all that stuff. I got nowhere to go anyway, and uh, sure. and I enjoy my fans. I really do, and and, I, and it's always really uh, you know really kind of fun for me to just see what they wonder about, you know, what they think about, not, not think about me, but wonder about me. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's different when you're, when you're face to face with someone. So I'm assuming Ron at the same time during these VIP fan experiences, they, I, I'm sure you get stuff brought to you often, right? Yeah. It is a place where you can, you, you know, people bring me cigars and wild socks and stuff like that. It's very, <laughs> very kind. Every once in a while, somebody will bring me a really expensive bottle of booze. <laughs> Which is ridiculous, and don't ever do that if you're listening. <laughs> don't don't waste your money buying me booze because it's, my booze is free, and I own a tequila company, and all I drink is my tequila, I, my number one extra in Yeho. Oh man, I, it's such a great your story is so great because, I mean, when when you started this comedy adventure. At any point, did you think, you know what, at one point I'll be touring the country and I'll have my own tequila? I mean, I hope that because you seem so grounded, uh, do you often stop and think like, man, I got a really good thing going here? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it and, I'm, uh, and I worked hard for it, but sure. I never saw it coming. Yeah. Uh, I never, things like this don't happen to me. And, uh, and I watched it happen to Jeff right next to me and mm-hmm. I didn't think it would happen to me. I really didn't. I didn't care. Uh, I liked being a club headliner. Uh, you know, I, uh, I made pretty good money and I wasn't paying my taxes. So it made it seem like I made even more money than that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I didn't see it coming. And, and, and when it did hit, it hit so big that I was just dumbfounded by it. I mean, all of a sudden one day I couldn't sell out a comedy club and then the next day I could sell out a 2000 seat theater in three minutes. Right. And uh, you know, then now all of a sudden you make all the money in the world, and uh, so I, it, it's a, and all of a sudden it's fame and fortune, all the things you've heard about, and uh, which is a just a big old bunch of landmines, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's women, and you know, just all the <laughs> every mistake you could possibly make <laughs> is laid out in front of you with grass covered over it like bear traps and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, so you know, I but. It's been a spectacular career, and it's, you know, maybe 16 years of it. It's been 30 years and three weeks. Wow. Uh, 16 years of it, maybe, 17 years of it, nobody cared. Uh, uh, but I, it took me, I got to spend that time developing, and then I got famous over eight minutes of material on Blue Collar One, or yeah. 10 minutes of material, and then the eight-minute story, so 18 minutes. Uh, and I, I was thinking when we were doing this, I'm like, wow, if I get famous off of 18 minutes, then I've got an entire show to tour with nobody's ever seen. Right. That is spot on, beat you to death. <laughs> and usually people burn that getting famous, and then they don't have another show. They have to write it, and uh, which takes a long time. And uh, so i like, this looks like the perfect storm to me. And if it works, man, it worked. And it worked so well in the specials and the albums. I mean, people really enjoy it. And I think a compliment that I can pay you is that you are not the type of comedian that settles on bits and rehashes them. I mean, you're you're always writing new material, right? I mean, it's just part of what you've done. Yeah, the uh, uh, I live in uh, L.A. and I live actually live in Beverly Hills. I hate, hate saying it, but I do. <laughs> And, uh, but the reason I do is it's, it's five, five minutes from free comedy clubs. So wow. every single night, uh, that I'm home, I, I Uber down to the comedy store, to the improv, to the laugh factory, and I'll do three sets. And if, if and, and all the big boys do, if, if people like comedy, they should come to LA and go to the comedy store because that's where everybody works stuff out. Uh, I was up there last, uh, oh, I don't know, about a month ago or something. And, like Louis C.K. was there, David Spade was there, Sarah Silverman was there. Uh, it, it just you never know. I, you know, sure. Chappelle works out there some, Rock works out there some. Uh, you know, it's a it's a cavalcade. <laughs> I love that. And and when you're in those instances, does everybody get along, or are you friendly with like Foxworthy? Because I, I talked to Jeff and Larry; they were in town a couple weeks ago. Both seem like great guys. I, I hadn't met him personally, but I wonder, 
when you are at a place like the comedy store, are you chummy or is it just kind of like people are there to take care of business and not as much conversation? Uh, chummy. I mean, I'm really good friends with with everybody up there. I, you know, but I have a pretty social reputation with comics. Sure. Uh, no matter how long they've been doing stand up, I sit out in the back and smoke weed with them. <laughs> and uh, the, that's the great thing about the comedy store. They've always embraced the fact that comics aren't normal, so they have a place for them not to be normal. <laughs> Uh, Instead of acting that normal, they, they just say, hey, wait a minute, here, if you're not going to be normal, do it over here. <laughs> um, which is great. And, uh, you know, so, but, but, you know, I'm friends with all the big comics. And and luckily, and one of the things I'm most proud of is I'm also respected by all these big comics. And, uh, sure. uh, and, and also by the young comics. And, you know, they'll sit around and ask questions. And I, I feel like, like, like the old grandfather of comedy <laughs> at 60. And, uh, <laughs> But that's okay because I can still bang it out with anybody. Yeah, uh, and and uh, and not only that, but I mean, you're just you're nonstop touring. Um, is Vegas special for you? Because on your website, tatersalad dot com, you are at the Mirage in Las Vegas a lot. So I I wonder, is it something about the Mirage, the venue? Is it the crowds? What's what's special about Vegas for you, Ron? Every single one of those things. Yeah. Uh, the uh, it's it's close to L.A. Mm-hmm. and so it's a it's like a home game. I do. I, I stay in a villa at the Mirage, and I've worked for the Mirage for years. And they sell my tequila, hmm. which is god wonderful of them. <laughs> and uh, and I, I do two shows: one Friday night, one Saturday night at ten o'clock at night. I get to play the best golf course in the world, which is Shadow Creek, uh, which is just exclusive to high rollers on MGM Grand Properties. That's all the only way you can get in, or be a pest and have them put it in your contract. <laughs> and uh, and then. You know, the the food, the shopping, Vegas is fun, you know, if you're not there for a long time. So I'm never there for more than two nights in sure. a row. Sure. And so I do about I do that about ten times a year. I love that. And I love and, it. And and I have to admit, and this is gonna make me sound like the 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 lamest radio personality ever. I've not been to Vegas yet, Ron. I don't know what's wrong with me. How old are you, dude? I'm thirty three. I have Jesus uh Christ. I know. <laughs> I know. I have my wife's been there. I got a four year old and an almost two year old. I feel like if I was ever going to go to Vegas, now is the time for me while they're still young, you know? Yeah, yeah. Get those kids out to Vegas. <laughs> I meant it would be a good opportunity to leave them with grandma so that I can split and not have to take them with me because I don't want to. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, I, yeah, right before grandma starts to hate them. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, now Vegas is a hoot, man. You, you, you know, it's. Uh, you know, there's those, your little casinos are popping up everywhere, but it's still not like going to Vegas. It's a uh, it's a whole new animal. And, uh, uh, but I, but yeah, I do it. I I enjoy it, and they treat me like a king. They uh, I'm their I'm their biggest comic, and they, they you know they do a lot of stand up there, and all big names. Sure. Most of them more famous than I am, but I'm their biggest comic. Most of them came from television fame, which is way bigger than me. And I'm a because I'm I'm a straight to DVD sensation. Right, you know, which is, that's different. <laughs> But you know what? I tell you what, it's it's working. And when you come to the Paramount Theater, which is a cool space in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, November nineteenth, you're going to have uh, more than likely a sold out crowd. And what's super cool for us, Ron, is that uh, we worked it out to where I get to give away a pair of front row tickets at my Halloween party on Saturday, and people are just like I said, they're going nuts for this. So. You're going to have some diehard fans when you come to the state of Iowa. I hope you know that. Well, you know, I've, I've been coming there for years, and it's always a blast, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, buddy, listen, tatersalad.com is the website. Um, I, I guess I just wanted to say before we wrap up that I was really disappointed. Um, well, Roadies was great. We talked about Roadies with you a couple months ago, and right. I, I thought that was going to stick around. Obviously, your character was was wonderful. Um, so you got the stand up and the touring and the tequila. Any other opportunities that we'll see you in TV shows, movies, stand up specials before the end of the year or into early 2017? Not early. Uh, I mean, the thing with Roadies, the, the I got such good reviews off of that show. Yeah. That it opened a lot of doors, but I don't think they're doors I want to walk through. You know, I'm a comedian at heart, and sure. I don't really like, uh, not that I don't like making television shows or movies, but I don't like the industry. <laughs> you know, they, they, you, they, they'll just build you up and break your heart, and, you know, and, and, and then stand up. 
and you have a million bosses <laughs> that can right. tell you what to do in stand up. I write it, produce it, perform it. I promote my own shows. It's a, it's a, you know, yeah. So nobody tells me what to do, and and I just like that better. So I don't. I'm not saying I'll never do another series, sure, or another movie. I probably will, but I have no idea when it'll be. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, I'll tour with a, an act with a show that I'm touring with now for a, a while before I release it on a DVD. So a lot of people, as soon as they have the material, they'll release it. Right. And then, which but doesn't make sense to me because then you're touring with material that your hardcore fans already know, and that's just stupid. Yeah, I, I never understood that. You know, I I've talked to people like Jim Gaffigan and other comics, and and it seems like you're you're absolutely right. Like you don't. And I personally, as a consumer of comedy, I wouldn't want to go to a show where I'm going to know all the jokes or half of them or whatever. You know, I don't want to. I want to experience something for the first time. Yeah, yeah. So that's just uh, that's something a little different about me. I'll, I'll once I write it, uh, I'm going to tour with it. I'm going to do every city I do with it, and uh, and maybe twice because if you've never. If you've never heard it, I mean, yeah. if you don't own it and watch it, if you see it uh, twice in two years, it'll beat you up exactly the same. <laughs> and even if you've heard it on the radio, that doesn't really matter. But if you've seen it on DVD or if you have that DVD, then you know it. Yeah, no, uh, it's such a good but, point. Um, yeah. Well, listen, man, I appreciate the time so much. Tatersalad.com is the website. Uh, VIP fan experience is a few of them still available for November 19th, Cedar Rapids. I'm going to be at the show. My first time seeing you live. I can't wait, buddy. It's going to be a blast. I know that. It's a Saturday night, so might have to sample some of the tequila or whatever. I just I'm... Absolutely. we got tequila and we've got whatever. Oh, it's great. I can't wait uh, to see you November 19th, Ron White. Thank you so much for the time, man. You're always welcome back on the radio in the state of Iowa with yours truly. Thank you, Tony. Take care, pal. Bye. Bye-bye.